flint. Well, uh, Clark, it's only flint, the caretaker. Well, I was asking that. Well, now that you do, take those cases to the servants' quarters. Flint, this is Letty, the new maid. Hello. How pleased to meet you. Oh, things are looking up around here. <laughs> here, Clive, uh, where's the missy? My wife passed on last December. Her aunt gave up. Oh, Clive. Oh, I'm going to miss her bubble and squeak. Flint, the guests will arrive momentarily, and the house is still not ready. Oh, Clive, I'm working as fast as I can. The upstairs is done. <laughs> Watch yourself, Flint. Letty prefers the well manicured hand. Oh, Clive, you don't be the master. I am not at liberty to say. <laughs>
me, dear. Well, perhaps he intends arriving in the morning. No, no, he'll be down presently. Then he has arrived. Yes, yes, soon after I went to my room, I saw his car pull up. Then I think no reason my dinner should be red hot. Eh? <laughs> I do hope dinner is a bit late. One should never rot a good sherry. <laughs> No, I, mm, I had no idea this was to be a party. I thought I alone was invited. My invitation mentioned no other guests. Mine stated quite clearly that Lord Wrangle wished to speak with me privately. Really? Mine too. Yeah. Well, then it looks like we found a very interesting topic for dinner conversation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have some distressing news. A severe electrical storm is rapidly approaching. Could there be a power failure? Candles have been distributed generously throughout the house. The rising water level of the lake has made the bridge to the mainland impassable. The master will not be joining you for dinner this evening. Lord Ranker is dead. Dinner is served. Oh, my God! Oh, my bag is in the hot closet. Have you smelling salt? Oh, he's beyond that, I'm afraid. For the lady. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, everyone, everyone, please be calm. I'll take care of her. Oh, stand back, please. Uh, Just everyone, please be seated. Oh, uh, let me, if you fight, come to. I think we can all use a little shepherd. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is it as I expected? What did you expect? Is he dead? Quite. Lightning, I suppose. No. Someone has tampered with this stair. Oh, you're not trying to tell us it. I'm afraid it is. Intentional. But, 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 how? An explosive. The type is yet uncertain. Or a building booby trap. Precisely. Why, Clive? It needn't have been he. It could have been any one of us. You're right, my dear, unless... Unless the device was carefully controlled. But, but that would be murder. Some things are put, and the butler didn't do it. The butler didn't do it. Is a exploding stairs are rather rare, 
you just don't find them everywhere. Without a quiz, that something is a... Considering the way he died, I don't think it was suicide. Without a quiz, that something is a... The situation's not the best for someone who reads the weekend yet. Without a quiz, that something is a... A very serious business. God, a murder, a righteous retreat. Perhaps so. What do you mean? Remember Clyde's last words? Dinner is served. Lord Ranker is dead. Oh, 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 the stars are now quite safe. Doctor, you see to Lord Ranker. I think it best we all remain together. What if he needs help? He knows his business. We can better use you down here. As we're going to spend some time here, I think it best we remove Clive to another room. Well, I'm not spending time here. I'm going. Oh, but you can't leave. None of us can leave. Clive said the bridge is impassable. He's only the word of a dead man for that. Send someone to make certain. We will do that. But with all the first, we will remove Clive. Master Nigel, will you assist Flint in removing Clive to, um, the library? Well, is there anything I can do to help? Keep the sherry glass of spills, my dear, and take some for yourself to soothe the nerves. That's what I need, Horace. Right. I believe I could do with something a, uh, a little stiffer. Good idea! <laughs> you will have to leave the scouting party to survey the bridge. Scouting party? By Jove, I haven't led a scouting party since I fought against the party was it? Yes, Colonel Gilmore. Shall I set off now? No, no. Wait until we know Lord Ranker's condition. Oh, as you say. By Jove, I wish I'd had you in India. Uh, with your head and my heart, those fuzzy wuzzies would have ended up dead. What? Lord Ranker is quite dead. But how? His heart. He had a bad heart. It was a heart attack. It was a revolver discharged at close range. I trust you didn't touch the revolver. Certainly not. There was no revolver to touch. I see. God, the master murdered. Dr. Braben, mm. how long would you say my uncle has been dead? It's difficult to tell. Three hours, probably less. Three hours? But then that would mean he was shot while we were in the house. Oh, ridiculous. I agree. I have no gun top. Well, it's an old house. The walls are thick. And the revolver was muffled. Most likely. But who would have wanted to kill my uncle? A murderer, good or bad, usually has a motive. Quite true. And what might this motive be? I have always been partial to revenge, passion, lust, and greed. Very recently, on my visits to Lord Ranker, I have noticed an inexplicably tense atmosphere between him and one of his servants. Well, yes. Clive. Right, Doctor. Clive was completely devoted to my uncle until... Until Clive's wife passed away. Here yeah, now, Clive always said his missus would be a work to her. And then the motive was revenge. Well, I, for one, don't think he done it. I don't think he done it. I, I did it either, my dear. Why not? Because Clive has also been the victim of foul play. Yeah, then the murderer could be saved miles from here by now. Unless he found the bridge in fact of us. But then that would mean the murderer is still on the island. Or in this house? Then I think we should brave the storm and find out. Just as I had planned, Colonel Gilmer! What? What? Oh, time for the scouting party. Yes, come along then. Up and Adam. Flint, we shall need rain gear. Aye, aye. Have you and lanterns. Doctor, you and young Nigel here will take the road to the bridge and survey the battlements from there. Flint? You will be my aide de call. We'll make a wide sweep of the island and rout the enemy from his entrenchments. We will then reconnoiter at the Iron Gate. Now, you have your orders, men. Into the fray. Come on, quick march, quick march, quick march, quick march. Come on, pick him up there. <laughs> Don't give up the, sh the chalet. <laughs> they, they didn't wear rubbers, some muck up the carpet when they come back. If they come back. I'm hungry. Just cold. I ain't cold, but... But, Nettie, couldn't we have some biscuits with our sherry? Yes, Mum. Well, Miss, I'm afraid to go in there. Oh, I'll go with you. Careful, girls. I'm terribly frightened. 
nonsense. To the gentlemen of their stuff, completely unprotected. Well, make do. But I'm a mere woman. Paul! Oh. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who rules the colonies, said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Most apropos words of ease. Though we're women, that is clear, we will somehow persevere. Pay heed, the word distraught, to Mr. Roosevelt's thoughts. Don't be afraid. When you can be courageous, why be afraid? High spirits are contagious, carry on. Don't be afraid. There is no need to cower, why be afraid? It's not a doctor's tower, carry on. When the day is bleak and your knees are weak, then your prayers away before. Oh, quiet, harbinger of evil. Letty, 
bind the hands and speak. I myself? I'd rather not, Miss. Lady Grace, I haven't covered a fifth letter, if you will. Do, 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 do. Hold fast, Violet. I think it's possible you have me confused with someone else. I said, quiet. We know more about you than you think, and we need hear none of your cunning lies. Gentlemen, I appeal to you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Can you do nothing? Uh, don't cut off the circulation. Thank you. Don't be taken in by his wiles, my dear. The hardest criminal can on occasion display charm. Oh, but Miss Green. Oh, Letty, I believe I hear the men without it. Ah. Now, don't knock up the carpet. We're coming clean to the island. We found another trace of the enemy. Oh, Letty, real pair. Who is this? If my deductions are correct, this is our man. So, oh, this is our murderer. Murderer? Is that what you... Murderer? Oh, please don't say anything else. But what would be his motive? Simple. He has a letter on his chest. He is a, he is a college student. College students are notoriously impoverished. He came here hoping to steal something of value. Was discovered by Lord Reza. Oh, and then the media play did him in. Oh, but never! Quiet, that. quiet, my dear, I haven't finished. <laughs> Therefore, I deduce that this young man is not only a college student at the feast, but a man of our as well. Let him, I believe, if you will search his knapsack, you will find the weapon. Let's see. Shirt, pair of trousers, cucumber sandwich. Oh, let him. Thank you. Well, there's nothing else in here but... Ah, uh, be careful not to smudge the fingerprints. Miss Tweed, you are remarkable. Well done. Yes, yes, well done. May I speak? Oh, yes, it's only fair. You may speak, but don't expect any of us to believe a word you say. Now, your first deduction was correct. I am a college student, but I am no thief. I'm a third oarsman. My team and I were rowing on the lake when the storm overcame us. Our tiny craft capsized, and the rest of the team swam to the mainland. I, not wanting to ruin my jersey, swam here. It was closer. My intention was to cross the bridge to the mainland. And finally, washed out, I came here for refuge. <laughs> A likely story. It sounds plausible. And instead of refuge, I find myself accused of murder. A murder I did not commit. Yes, there have been two murders. That's right. What about Clive's murder, Miss Tweed? I happen to speak wouldn't have had time to wire the stairs. By Joe, she's right, you know. Good thinking, Miss. But what about the gun? He did have a gun. It has been fired recently. <laughs> yes, it has. That is a starting pistol. It fires blank. In that case, you won't mind my pointing it at you. Why no? Then why are you so nervous? Just that I've never had a gun pointed at me before. And you still maintain this is a blank pistol? Yes. Well, in that case, you won't mind my firing it at you. <laughs> I think you can untie me now. Well, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Look, I know that I'm an outsider, but now that I'm inside, will somebody please explain what's going on? Wait, no, I think I'd better explain, my dear. You we're all the weekend guests of the late Lord Ranker. How late? Mm. Approximately three hours and thirty minutes. You see, he and his butler Clive have been murdered this evening. Murdered? In this house? Yes. One upstairs and one on. Naturally, you being the only stranger in our midst, we suspected you. Well, there's help on the way. Well, how could help be on the way? The bridge is washed out. Have you telephoned? <laughs> telephone, of course! Oh, isn't he wonderful? Are you there? Oh, operator, Dr. operator. Uh, I see that. Can you hear me? Hello, 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 hello Dr. operator. Dr. Uh, hello. Uh, the wire has been cut. Good God, the wire has been cut. Operator, the wire has been cut. <laughs> Anyone see my garden shears? Hmm, cut wire, missing shear. <laughs> Is this the only telephone in the house? Oh, no. There's one in every room. Would you check, then? Alone. 
a while, Tom. Oh, but hadn't you better change first? You're soaked to the skin. How thoughtful of you to notice. I do hope one of those telephones is all fair, Beast. I couldn't bear to spend another moment on this island. We're almost anxious to leave, Lady Grace. Uh, something has been troubling me. What's that, my dear? You said that Lord Ranker has been dead for approximately three hours. That's correct. Did it happen in his room? I say so, yes. And yet the Colonel saw his car pull up. I did. I did not more than two hours ago. Well, that's what has been troubling me. Yes, well, I drove the master's car up. You drove his car, though. Yes, me. And your missing shells most likely cut out on the means of communication. The machine must have been stolen. The rest is simple. Nothing is simple when murder is involved. Why were you driving Lord Banker's car? I found it parked beside the West Wing. I drove it round the garage, that's all. Did you see Lord Banker? No. I figured he'd already arrived to go straight to his room. Perhaps. But have you escaped? Oh, no, I am a bit tired of that we really are completely cut off on the outside world. All alone here on this damned island. <laughs> I say, uh, anyone care for a romping game of chess? lies only with the person in the direct line of fire. That is extra, Dr. Zag. I see you know your gases, Colonel. Well, I should. Fought in the Great War, you know. <laughs> is it lethal, Colonel? Oh, come on. I would say that death was all those things. Oh, the doctor murdered, too. Is it murder this time? It looks that way. Another fiendishly concocted device. A tiny mechanism. Step to simulate the ringing of a telephone. <laughs> well, I thought it sounded like a telephone bell myself. What are we to do? Get off the top of this. Cut of two. Oh, what are we to do? First, we will remove the body. Master Nigel, with you with this fleet in removing the good doctor to the library. Uh, this uh, may not be a good time to bring this up, but uh, we men have been out fighting the elements, and I, for one, could do with a bracer of tea. After this harrowing experience, I think we'd all be wanting tea, lady. I tell you, I'm not going in there alone. We'll be happy to accompany you, won't we, Colonel? Yes, of course, yes, you allow me. Uh -huh. Lady Grace, oh, no, 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 thank you, Miss Tweed. I am free, Potty if you will excuse me, I shall go to my bed and have a little rest. You won't forget to bolt the door, dear. Oh, just to bolt the door, I'll bolt the door. The windows, too. If you want me, I'm under my bed. One would think they left us alone for a 
a purpose. Perhaps so I can get to know you better. I don't know you at all, and yet I feel I've known you all my life. Me too. I don't frighten you, though, do I? Oh, no. How could I be frightened of you? There's a hint of hidden danger when you meet a dashing stranger. And I don't know why I trust you, but I do. Yes, I do. When our glances coincided, on your face had been decided. And I don't know why I trust you, but I do. Yes, I do. You've given my heart a You My knight without his armor, but you'll feel my princely charmer like a lot of lot. You're too good to be true. Oh, I don't know why I trust you. Discussion, we should be alone, Lady Ranker. What? what did you call me? Lady Ranker. I'm on to you in your little game. I don't know what to mean. Rumor has it that you, my dear lady, are practically penniless. That is not true. It is. You do recognize your own handwriting on this letter to my uncle, your ex husband. Why should I write to Lord Ranker? To request a loan of several thousand. Yes. To retain my social position, I must have financial assistance. Sarah Studley. You may think it's strange, my writing you after all these years, but you are my last hope. No. Since our divorce, you we... You needn't go on. We were married. I never knew my uncle had been married. This is not a union of love. Suddenly, was a successful barrister who needed a wife of social prominence. My days and nights were spent in loneliness. Until I met Shirley, 
A dashing young lieutenant. Our affair was brief, but beautiful. Dudley found us out. And had Shirley sent away. I never even knew his last name. <laughs> I was sent to the south of France until the divorce was final. I stayed on, met Lord Manley Prow, and tried to forget. And now I am without funds or family. So, old Dudley invited you this weekend to give you your loan. I had hoped. And if he refused? I would have been desperate. Exactly. Desperate enough to murder. But why? Perhaps you did see about he did refuse. That is not true. But if it were, Lady Grace, you have a motive, a motive clearly defined in Miss Letter. But I did not kill him. Whether you did or did not does not interest me. My interest lies in a large sum of money my uncle should have left me in his will. A sum we could share if we work together. Why would you share it with me? I need your help. I tell no one about this letter if you assist me. We must find my uncle's will. If he has made me his heir, we have no problem. If not, we must destroy the will before anyone sees it. After all, I am the legal heir. But how can I help? I need time to search Dudley's rooms. Don't let anyone come upstairs. How can I prevent them? Flirt! Ooh, use any womanly device. But I must have time. Oh. I thought you were in your room. But I couldn't sleep. Well, I can, and by Jove, I think I will. And the night is still young, Colonel. My dear lady, a brisk tramp through the elements and the bracer of tea have set me up for a good night's sleep. Um, so tell me, Colonel, you were not... How long have you been in the office? Uh, yeah, all my life. Yes, all my life. But it must be a fascinating existence. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Yes, rise at sun up, sleep at sunset. Good night, my lady. Uh, cigarette? Uh, yeah, no, no, thank you. No, no. I like cigarettes. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. I never touch them. Mm. Have a Havana. Uh, thank you. Havana. Havana. Oh, Havana. Ever been there? Oh, not that I can recall, but then I've been so many places in the world. With a girl in every port? No. No, I learned my lesson early in life. And I'm the happy lover there. Yes. Yes, quite. Oh, I totally sympathize, Colonel. I, too, had an unhappy love affair when I was young. As a matter of fact, with a dashing young lieutenant. I was the lieutenant at the time. She was a beautiful slip of a thing. Every movement filled with grace. Grace. Grace was her name. My Don Juan was named Shirley. What? I know, an odd name, Shirley. His surname? I never knew. Your name? At the time, Grace Rank. Oh. Grace? Really? Grace. Really? Oh, it's been so long. Yes, it's been it's been twenty odd years, hasn't it? Yes. Twenty odd years, and now here I am. And there you are. Yes. Well, there you are. Good night. <laughs> Da, da, ya, da. Now you do remember the little cafe, the French chanteuse, the vintage wine, the our song. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. He treats me right. He treats me left over. But I have always been a push, a bum, bum, a gentleman with a notch, like the man with the ginger mustache. The man is cruel, the man is sweet, 
But that man can sweep me Clear off of my feet Girl, man can give a girl a rash If the man has a ginger mustache I've been around with men of all classes Knew all the tricks I knew all the passes then he appeared, and the game was not the same. This was a game that he knew how to tame. Shame. He treats me right. He treats me wrong. With the ginger mustache Got me going around and around Can't keep up of my feet on the ground Love that ginger mustache A child? A child. Dudley's? Yours and mine. Ours? Yours and mine. A baby? A baby. A baby child? <laughs> yes, Shirley. Yours, mine, baby, child? I, oh, my dear, 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 do sit down. Is there anything I can get you? Oh, no, that was 21 years ago, Shirley. Here's the brandy. No, thank you. Oh, no, no, I, I, I want the brandy. <laughs> You sure? Yes. A father. I'm a father. Yes, Shirley. Grace, I'm a father. Tell me, am I a boy father or a girl father? I never knew. Dudley never let me see the child. Never? No. That was part of the bargain. My shame would never be disclosed, and Dudley would raise our child as his legal heir. The education and upbringing of our child was a closely guarded secret. And now Dudley's dead. Surely we may never know if we are the parents of a boy or a girl. Then our child will be Dudley's heir. Yes. Unless. Unless what? Unless Nigel finds Dudley's will. He intends destroying it if he is not the legal heir. How do you know? He told me. He wants me to help him. And I must. Must? Yes, must. And shall we tell him why, Lady Grace? No, 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 no. Would you like to know the contents of this frantic letter her ladyship wrote my uncle? Nigel. Grace, what does it say? Nigel, why don't you tell him about the will? Tell Colonel Gilweather about the will. Whose business is that but mine? That's all. Am I not the legal heir? Oh, 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 you must come back into the kitchen. We just uncorked the most provocative bottle of Nigel and 26 I have ever come across. <coughs> Please, you'll never guess what Jeffrey found. We were examining Clive's body and he found this gun. Examining the book? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I probably bust up the fingerprints. <coughs> Good work, young man. Could this be Lord Renter's murder weapon? God! Ah, there you are, Mr. Flint. Do you recognize this pistol? I've never seen it before. Could it have belonged to Clive? I wouldn't know. Or perhaps to Lord Renter? I wouldn't know. Mm. Well, we'll put it in the desk near our other weapon that can it Here, here. What these are these your missing guns, sir? Well, how would they get in there? Somebody put them there. And possibly someone put this gun on Clive's body just as someone put gas in the telephone back home. Where was I? Ah. Oh, 
Order! Grace! Try 